This is probably the closest thing to a real life Omnitrix you've ever seen. With one push, it transforms me into a fiery alien. Just like in the show where Ben uses his high tech watch to transform himself into several different aliens. But is anything like that even possible? Well, today we're gonna test our way to answer that question. Shout out War Thunder for sponsoring this. This one's special to me. Growing up, I watched Ben 10 every morning. And for those 20 minute episodes, I truly imagined I was an unbeatable superhero in the show. And the only thing that could stop me was when my mom turned off the TV and said, time for school. I had this whole book of my own aliens that I drew at recess. And look at this, like literally one out of 10 right there. That's wild. Oh my God, <laughs> two out of 10. That's a little fire. Look at that little guy. Didn't have a whole lot of friends. But I even tried making my own freeze blaster like big chill or like a fire shooter like swamp fire But they could never quite do what I wanted and I never got that omnitrix transformation I dreamt about and wanted with every fiber of my being 15 years later I've grown up moved on got a normal job. Nah, nah, nah I still really want an omnitrix Clearly, I'm not alone here. Drop a comment for another banger project I should do as well. The big problem, Ben's a cartoon. So physics and reality get a little lost. You know it's gonna be a hard one when the first easy part is making a literal hologram. Started by getting some reference 3D models and playing around with them to fit the electronics inside. Then I grabbed a green laser off Amazon for a few bucks and stripped it down so we're left with just the diode and circuit board. Then I put a light diffuser on the end along with this 3D printed cap I made with the outline of a Ben 10 alien. Now we've got a super bright Right green picture of an alien. Now we just gotta make it float in midair like the Omnitrix. For that, I got a few of these ultrasonic mist makers. They're super cheap, small, and when you put them in water, they make a nice column of mist. It's really cool actually. And already, if we shine our laser through the mist, it starts to show up midair as the light illuminates the small particles of mist. So let's mount the laser to the back of the Ultimatrix along with the circuit and switch. Then add the mist makers to the watch face with some water inside. Now we got ourselves a holographic Ben 10 Omnitrix for less than 20 bucks. Not bad. Check that out. You can wave your hand right through it. Man, if I had this as a kid, I would never take it off. I would love to make this into a real toy or something. But for now though, we do have our other sweet wrist gadget, the web shooters. It shoots a dart with a web on it, sticks to whatever you shoot at with the magnet or suction cup, then you can either pull in what you got or rewind it automatically with the push of a button. Then click it back in place and you're ready to shoot again. It's so fun. So if you want, grab yours now with the link below. But back to the Omnitrix, cause it still can't do the hardest part. Turn me into an alien. Because I got scammed out of some alien DNA and these spiders are not cooperating either. Man, they are not biting the day. I'll be happy if the watch can transform me to mimic their looks and powers. Ben's caught a lot of different aliens though. Most of the OG ones fall into a few categories. You've got your flying aliens. It's possible to mimic with several of these high powered electric ducted fans. Each one puts out about 17 pounds of thrust. So if we get enough of them, put some on my hands and the rest on my back with some super light batteries, we can actually balance on the jets and create a suit with enough thrust to stably fly around. Insanely cool and very superhuman. It's just boring borderline impossible to pack an entire flying suit into a wristwatch. Ben's also got ice aliens, big chill, arc iguana, which seem easier to mimic, you know, by taking the gas in the air and squeezing it down really hard until it liquefies and gets really cold. Liquid nitrogen is the most popular example of this. So if we get enough liquid nitrogen stored on our back and build a rig to shoot it out along with water, we can basically freeze anything we want. Also, even skate around by shooting a thin layer of ice to slide on. His strong aliens could use an exosuit of some sort. We could build a fancy Tesla coil for his electric aliens. Ben's aliens also go really fast, which we could sort of do with more of those EDFs on our back for like a speed boost. If you haven't noticed by now, I've already built a lot of these powers and want to try something new. But one of Ben's most iconic aliens is his first, Heat Blast. He's the OG, starts off the entire show when that alien device did what it did. Always imagine just slapping my wrist and turning into this fiery burning thing. Just insanely cool and insanely dangerous. We're quite literally going to be playing with fire here, so safety is like first, second, and third priority. Do not try this, okay, if that wasn't clear. I don't want none of you running around on fire because of this video, all right? I'm talking to you, I'll do it. The tricky thing with Heat Blast is he's actually on fire himself. I've shot fire from my hand before, but that's a lot easier because the fire's not actually on me, so there's a lot less heat to worry about. And if we break it down, heat is really the only thing we gotta worry about. I know it sounds obvious, but if we could just make the fire colder, 
Problem solved. This is isopropyl alcohol. It's special because of its relatively low ignition temperature, about four times colder than wood fire. I can already hold it for a little bit without burning. The problem, it's not that bright. It's gotta be super dark to see. Also, how do we control the amount of fire if we want more or less? And the big one, how do we put it out? All important questions that are solved by using a gas like propane. It burns brighter. We can adjust the size by controlling the flow of gas. And probably the most important, we can put it out fast. The downside, it's much hotter. So we still gotta keep that heat away and get the gas to evenly cover me. Like on your propane stove, you might've noticed all these little holes the fire comes out of. See how it's like a bunch of mini flames put together? It's not uniform on like liquid fueled fires. To fix that, we need a lot of tiny exit holes, like the fibers in this fabric glove. That's all you do? This is all you do. You had me excited. Are you not excited yet? <laughs> Wow, I do see the vision. High five. <laughs> High five. Eight. Oh God. That's another problem. Well, what do you want me to do? I can't put it out. What do you want me to do here? It's on fire on the table. I know, I know, I know it's on fire. Everyone says it's on fire. I know it's on fire. Right? That's why I'm just saying it's not gonna work. After a while, it starts to burn. It's we need to, to make burn. it not burn. Whatever we make the suit from not only needs to keep me cold, but also not burn up itself. This glove actually was fire resistant, but uh, Clearly not enough. Yeah, this is gonna be hard. I mean, Ben literally started a forest fire the first time he used this. Metal is very fireproof, so maybe we can use some mesh to withstand the heat and also move around. But metal also conducts heat really well. So while it can handle the open flame, all that heat goes right on through to us. But if we use a metal mesh with an insulator, then we protect against the open flame and the excess heat. I first thought about using a really fine chainmail outer layer that we pump gas through, but honestly, that seems like a nightmare to make. So instead, I grabbed this, a steel braided sink tube. If we pull out the plastic inside, cap off the end, and pump in some gas, oh geez, boom, super uniform flame tube. Yeah. Yep, that's gonna be my hand. Now that the fire part's figured out, time to find an insulator so we don't, you know. So this is ceramic wool. It's used inside furnaces and can handle 3000 degrees. Basically burn resistant. So I put it on a glove with the flame tube and it seems like it can handle heat, but there's a downside. It disintegrates when you touch it. It's also basically asbestos, so not ideal. I also tried woven carbon felt, which is easy to work with, but not quite fireproof enough and would eventually burn up. The best solution I found was a nickel titanium outer shield around the fire tube, combined in with welding gloves. All right, chat, what do you think this is gonna work? <laughs> wow. Oh, that was sick, dude. Whoa! Pretty cool, I can just do flame on, and then you, well, oh, yeah, like, yeah. once I put in the lighter. Oh, that's so sick. <laughs> and we can cook hot dogs on it. It looks sweet, but Heat Blast has some powerful ops. We need more firepower if we're gonna battle literal armored drill tanks. I mean, battling tanks is pretty epic though, like in War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. It's got over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from all over the world from over the last 100 years. Might even give the real Ben 10 a run for his money. <laughs> like, imagine Jet Ray versus a literal fighter jet. That'd be pretty epic. It'd be Big Chill's camouflage versus the camouflage on the tanks in the game that you can fully customize, by the way. And you can control all these vehicles yourself, kind of like how Ben 10's upgrade alien takes control of machines to fight his enemies. It's got super realistic graphics, sounds, and a ton of detail to make it super immersive. There's also a community of 70 million players you can battle against, a perfect game for fans of military history. And you can play this game right now for free on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation with my link below. If you use the link, you get a massive bonus pack multiple premium vehicles, and seven days of a premium account. But there's still an issue with our solution. While the glove itself survives the burning, eventually it gets hot inside because that heat has nowhere to go. After about 20 seconds, my hand cooks like a baked potato. Feels a little warm. <laughs> we need to fix that. Maybe we can water cool. It works for computers and engines, so why not this? Oh, I was just gonna do a little test. Oh, God. Um, it kind of works. Definitely helping. Definitely feels cold, but the hope was the water would evaporate off as it came out, pulling the heat along with it. Instead, it kind of just splutters out and makes a mess. Also, after the water soaks through the glove, it gets extra hot because it just conducts the heat right through the glove to my skin. Look, I never said it was perfect, all right? We're gonna try air now. Huh. Yeah, that works. Wow. Air cooled, who would have thought? Yeah, it's hot out here. Ah, it's so cold in the glove. This totally worked. Just a small leaf blower pushes enough air through the glove to flush out the heat and keep things really cold. 
Looks like we got a winner. This flex sensor reads how closed my hand is and controls a servo on the gas valve. So the more I make a fist, the bigger the fire gets. But Heat Blast also shoots flames. To do that, I ordered a squ that we can pump some through with a push of a so we can really turn up the heat. Last thing we need, an ignition source. And we thought it'd be super badass if you could just snap and catch on fire. So with a little flint on my thumb and steel on my finger, we can make a spark and boom. Oh, so sick. That is insane. Let's give ourselves another hand. Oh, let's go, dude. That is so sick. Let's go. Of this video game where uh, gloves would catch on fire. That's what this is reminding me of. Oh, yeah. But when I get it, dude, that looks so sick. But I'm still not exactly looking like Heat Blast. Now, my first thought was naturally to cover the rest of me in fire, too. But he doesn't really look like he's on fire. Less human torch and more glowing energy under some volcanic rock. It actually looks more like these energy builds I found that use programmable LEDs. Basically, you can individually control each light, and with a bit of code, you can do some amazing things. So I got down and dirty and started learning everything I could about light coding libraries, APIs, control logic. Psych! I'm just kidding. Make me fire, more fire, longer fire, brighter, more, more fire, make me more fire, longer, more red, more, more bird, but longer fire, shorter, shorter fire, okay, more, faster, more, faster, but like shorter, but like more red, more orange, less red, okay, more, less, more, but also less, less in like a longer form, but also more fire, not faster, quick, more fire, make it better. Now that we got ourselves some nice looking fire, I started cutting out lava rock shapes for reference, dropped them in CAD, and 3D printed them with more texture in a flexible rubber. Then decided to use absolutely none of that, because I can just hand cut and glue the foam on much easier. Nice shot. In between these cracks, we're gluing on the glowing firelights. I don't want to miss this. It's cool, but it still looks like lights and not a fiery energy, because you can still see the individual lights. We gotta diffuse that to make it look all like one flowing thing. To do this, we want something semi-clear, but also very sticky and bendable. This will make the lights look much better and blend together. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but with a little tweaking and shimmying, Bruh. we made it work. Now we gotta do the top half, which is tricky, because we also have all the electronics and fire components to deal with. One arm, feeling like Kevin 11 at this point. <laughs> with a bit more gluing, lights, and cream cheese later, we're almost done. I also added some burnt red coloring to really make it like heat blast. And finally, the Ben 10 Omnitrix symbol on the chest. It's looking good, but how do we get the watch to turn us from this into that? There's a bunch of animations showing this transformation. Favorites though are the spread out from the watch to eventually emerge as heat blast. It looks so cool. But again, how do we pull off something like that in real life? Because let's be honest, most of the live action Ben 10 stuff is, it's not, it's not it. It's weird, it's just weird, all right? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. So I've got a pretty fire idea. <laughs> But for it to work, we need a slightly different Omnitrix. So I built the OG one too, with a screen that pops up when you twist it. It even plays the heat blast animation. Yeah, okay, okay, we only have one alien so far. Just chill, all right? How many aliens does your Omnitrix have? The secret with this Omnitrix is the trigger switch it has inside that activates when you press it down. What does this do, you might ask? Well, after thinking about it, Ben 10 already has his signature green wardrobe. So if we build our heat blast suit into his regular clothes, the whole thing can transform. That gives us much more room than cramming everything into a watch. To do the transformation, I'm making Ben's normal clothes out of this fiery flash paper, which we can trigger from the press of the Omnitrix. It'll start a chain reaction with the normal flash paper clothes burning away, transforming me into heat blast. I also added a layer of silicone to protect the suit and myself from the flames. Now only the flash paper should burn and not catch anything else on fire. That's, then it fell over. I also tested several types of paint to see how it would affect the flash paper. That's pretty good actually. Some left a lot of residue, which ruins the effect, but food coloring actually burned super clean and left no trace. Perfect. So I made a bunch of green flash paper for the jacket and some blue flash paper for Ben's classic blue jeans, then a bit of black and white for the details. With a bit of texturing, it's honestly looking decent. The jeans look kind of like denim and the jacket's starting to look like a baggy hoodie. If this works the way I have it in my mind, it'll be the coolest Ben 10 build of all time. 
Now, I've done a lot of crazy stunts and each one scares me for a different reason, but that's why it's super important to plan and plan and plan. The whole fire transformation only lasts about five seconds. The suit is fully insulated and can keep me safe for longer than that. We also consulted movie stunt professionals who do much longer burns using fire gel. So under the flame suit, I'm also covering myself with this gel, especially on my face and hands. And we've got several people on standby with fire extinguishers. Again, for the hundredth time, do not try this, but we're finally at a place where I'm excited and ready to make this dream a reality. So this one's for all the kids out there who ever wanted a real life Omnitrix. It's hero time. Dude, that's so sick. Dude, that was insane. You felt my heart going. I think that's uh, about as close as I can get to being real Ben 10. It felt wild. It genuinely feels like I'm a fiery alien on another planet. So until gene-altering tech gets developed by people way smarter than me, it's the closest thing I've got to a real Omnitrix. Also, don't forget to play War Thunder using my link for a free bonus pack, because it helped make this possible. And this really is a bucket list goal complete. I just know little 10 year old me would be geeking out right now. Ah, poor guy. Maybe stop drawing and make some friends. But seriously, if you've ever got a dream, even from a young age, don't forget, don't give up, no matter how out of reach it might seem.